morning folks today we're going to finish plumbing this pump up or at least we're going to get it mounted on here and then i don't know what we're doing after that yeah yesterday we left you a little high and dry we're putting that pump on and then we just stopped but that's because it started raining so we got everything put up and that was it turns out as soon as we got stuff put up it quit raining like seriously it didn't rain much at all and there's a chance we might get a strip deal today. Slight chance. Looks like dad's gonna try spraying today. In this truck out of the way, like I said, dad's gonna go spray. I'm gonna go check out a 40 acre sandy field and see what it looks like. Maybe we can run it later this evening. It's supposed to be sunny all day. Um, so yeah, maybe that'll go. If not, I might go after a little dry fertilizer. You may be wondering if you're going spraying, why aren't you taking the tanker for water? Well, we're fortunate enough that two thirds of the acres that we farm are very close to a well that we tend out of. So usually dad will just fill up the sprayer, go spray a tank and then just come right back. But the tanker is gonna get used quite a bit when we side dress corn later in the season and when we start spraying away from that well. So it will come in handy. It's just, we just don't need it today. I hope we get the chance to run today. Now the RTK that we had installed, still waiting on a Sims card to come in the mail. Hopefully that comes today and then we'll be sub inch accuracy. Now that is important so that dad, when he goes to plant that field, he will be planting directly on the strip. Now I'm gonna walk, I'm gonna walk out here. The field that we planted is right beside where we spray out of. So I'm gonna check these, they're not out of the ground yet, it doesn't appear. It's frosted the last two mornings, so I want to check, see how they were doing, see if they're about ready to pop up or what's going on. Oh yeah, they sprouted. They sprouted that one, see. But it ain't popped out yet. No, that's good. It's like God's end. Yeah, it's frosted. It's been warm, it's been up, but it's been raw yet. But I think it's gonna be alright. Pine deep. So yeah, I think those beans are going to be okay. They're not out of the ground yet, obviously, which is, like I said, it's good. Um, swelled up. If it would get warm and stay warm, they'd be right out of the ground. Now, those beans are planted April 6th. Yeah, April 6th and 7th. And this is the 16th. Got a little bit of time while that tank there is filling. So, I guess we're going to unhook Dad's tractor from a ripper. That way, if we can get it hooked onto the corn planter sometime. Uh, I don't think the corn planter needs anything, but it does need a quick going over but I believe it's it's pretty close to field ready. It was rebuilt last year, and uh, I don't think any bearings went out, but we do need to check it. There you go. Sometimes three-point implements can be a real bear to unhook. That actually went pretty smooth. Huh. I guess we're gonna shuffle some stuff around. We're going to go ahead and hook up to dad's planter, but we do that. We've got to first pull out the Great Plains drill, pull it out and hook it, back in, hook up to that, and then pull it out and hook it, and then put the drill where the corn planter's at. You know what'll get you in trouble? Coming from a 1038 that automatically sets the part brake for you. Just forgot to put the part brake on. Musical implements. Back to the drill we go. Now the corn planter will fit right in here. BJ's gotta put that seat tender back over there first. While the planter's out and in the daylight, we're playing everybody's favorite game. Uh, is it hooked up right? Dad went through his phone, couldn't find a picture how he hooked, so. He oh, he did have a picture. We're just trying to decipher said picture. Okay, we're just trying to decipher it. Now, a little bit of background on Dad's planter. It's a John Deere planter. Where's that spray? Right here. We, uh, in 2010, I believe, we put a Trimble field IQ system on it. So the Trimble monitor is what's reading the units. 
It has precision planning on it though, so therefore there's a 2020 in it. But the tractor needed the tremble to steer, so I don't know, there's a little bit of redundancy there. He's reading off two monitors. He doesn't really need to, but he needs the tremble to steer anyways. It's not the most perfect system in the world. Amen. Amen, but it does work. And until we put electric drives on this planter or get a different planter, uh, that's what we're stuck with. But that's what we're trying to get hooked up now is all electronics. Got everything hooked up. We're gonna make sure it'll fold and unfold. Uh, I think I'm gonna be planting some of the corn this year with dad. Um, so I don't remember how it folds. I don't remember what buttons to push. The question is, do you remember how to unfold it? Maybe. Drop your hitch you down. down. Where do you set your hitch at on here? Huh? Where you set it at? Well, I think five or six on level. Okay, so that's gonna pick the frame up off the that's going to pick the wings up off the frame then, right? Yeah. Right there, you're going to see them come up in the air. Right now, they're latched over the main frame. Oh, well, one wrong way with it. There we go. So you got to drop down a little bit more. Okay, now push down. Wrong way. There you go. You guys think his speech is bad. You ought to see his writing. Mine's just as bad. Oh, nope, there's a George sighting. There. So you have to put, program your field in up there too? Yeah. Do you have to on the iPad or once you do it yeah. on there, it does yeah. on the iPad? It'll do one or the other, yeah. So you can put it, you can program everything on the iPad and it'll yeah, do it sure. up there. Yeah, sure. I think that's right. I believe that's it. I actually ran a 1790 John Deere splitter planter for one year. Um, it was pretty old and wore out. We got it really cheap. And then that's what we traded for our first case planter. Straight up. She ready to roll? She's ready. Is that about the golf cart or the planter? Planter! Oh! Yeah, I went and picked up some lunch. Dad's spraying. We got a guy riding with him trying to get his steering calibrated still. So drop his lunch off. And we might be able to strip till. I guess Dad is going to switch over and start putting on 28. We've got some ground we're not going to strip till, um, just because of the ground. Um, there's some, for example, there's a couple fields that we've cleaned out tree lines and stuff, and I know if we put a shank in the ground, we're going to be picking up root balls and stuff like that for a long time. So we don't want to strip till those. Dad is going to put 28 on with the sprayer on those fields. It's too windy to spray right now, and he can still do that, so that should work out okay. All right, we're in the tractor. We are heading to the field. BJ came over and helped me hook this four-wheel steer cart up. Because that thing is a pain in the butt to hook up by yourself, as it turns out. So, first day with the uh, shiny wheels. Shiny. Posted, or posted an Insta story of putting those wheels on yesterday. I actually got a message from Duggo. If you guys aren't on Instagram, you have no idea who I'm talking about. That is Duggo from Larson Farms. Chet's dad, he said, you better shine them. So, they'll go. If it rains, I'll get right on it. But I ain't stopping to shine wheels. I'm trying to think of jobs I dislike more than shining aluminum wheels. There's not many. Yep, just because it's farm season don't mean you're exempt from house chores. Wife asked me to take the trash out. There's the house. There's the house. There's the trash. There's the dumpster. It's all right. We got some trash in here we need to clean out. All right, we got to turn on our valves, and I think we're ready to give it a try. I'm going to check these wheels, just make sure all the lugs are tightened still. I didn't mark them when we left, or when we put them on the first time, so make sure none of that stuff moved, and we'll be good. Still tight. Good. All right, we're making our second pass. It's working up okay. I mean, the ground's plenty wet. It's pulling hard. I mean, it's pulling, pulling hard. We're using 100% power. Um, the wheels are doing okay. The only problem is they're just a little bit wider. They're, my stance right now is actually like eight inches wider than the other ones. If it's completely flat, I'm fine, but it's not completely flat in places. Anytime I'm on the slightest hill, I'm rolling over into my strip, and I don't like that. That's not ideal. You don't want to run on that strip if you don't have to after you make it, because I mean, you're just packing it back down. But, uh, we are a little bit sometimes. Oh yeah, we're pulling hard, pulling hard. But we're getting her up to speed. Just doing my ends here. 
We've got two more passes and we'll be done with this field. Moving on. Here we're running over our overlap. We do have a little bit of overlap from the headlands. There's a way you can make this tractor automatically raise up before you get to your headlands. Uh, we'll see if I can do that on the next field. Because where we're running a ground drive pump, this is just getting extra fertilizer that it doesn't really need. Looks like right there I guessed my headlands pretty right. Alright, our first field's done. First field I've ever strip tilled. Pretty excited. Went to get out and check my lugs. Even brought my torque wrench just in case. They look fine actually. We got an overpass coming up here that might be a tight fit. Might have to go real slow. Alright, we made it. But it was tight. All right, we're pulling on this field. Hopefully we don't pop a wheelie going over these railroad tracks. Uh, this thing's heavy on the back and you definitely get to watch those front suspension, independent uh, suspension work. She will see that. Oh yeah. Not much on the ground in the front. Come on, baby. I guess we got a really expensive wheelie bar on the back if nothing else. I don't know if you can see, but we're just about out of fertilizer. We have less than a hundred gallons. BJ is pulling in right now to fill me up, and then we'll be in good shape for a while. All right, perfect. Haven't moved in yet. All right, it's going to take a little while to fill that thing up, so I'm going to walk out here and check my strips. I need 600 gallons to finish this field. If you guys can see that crack in the screen, I'm actually filming this on my DJI Osmo and I dropped it and it broke the little lens protector. But here's the main complaint so far. These tires are just too wide. My strip is actually like right there, but we're right on the edge of it. I don't like that, but it is what it is. But the ground's working up good. It's plenty wet, but it's sandy ground, so I think we're gonna be okay. It looks beautiful, I think. We need 600. We're getting there. Tank's about out. BJ forgot the gas can, so I think we'll be all right. Yeah, these uh, these things definitely cake on the dirt. Like I say, these aren't the greatest application, but they were really cheap. One thing I've noticed with the strip tiller, depending on what kind of weeds are on the ground, for example, like uh, I think it's called chickweed, it's, uh, it's pretty dense the way it grows. Sometimes when you get stuff like that, your strips aren't very pretty. They just don't, uh, you just don't move a lot of dirt because there's so much of a root system in there. It's hard for the, the strip till bar to actually move that dirt. But other than that, these look great. And I don't see a lot of that, fortunately. But yeah, our, our strippers are doing well. All right, I think I see some thunder in the distance. Yeah, BJ's bringing me some fuel because we're going to get an alarm here soon. I just go ahead and put some def in it too while he's here. Since I think he has some on board. Let's see if we can pull up to the thunder without smashing BJ's pickup with the stripper bar. This is our first time actually using this thing, so this is this is fun stuff. Exciting. There. Got it. Alright, we're back to stripping. BJ is going to go check some of the ground I strip tilled. Um, we're testing things just to see how it's settled. I think he's going to dig a hole, see how the ground looks. Our theory is that the longer we can uh, the longer we can let this ground settle, the better it's going to plant, in my opinion. Um, I wouldn't be super scared to plant right behind this. I feel like though that if we can let it settle a little bit, we're not going to be, we're not going to have any disadvantages from that. So I want to try to get as much done as I can before the next rain, which looks like tomorrow we're supposed to get a rain in the morning. Now that's been pushed back. Looks like our forecast is showing rain tomorrow evening. So hopefully I can knock out another hundred acres tomorrow after the after we get done whenever we get done tonight. Yeah. 
dripping with the lights on. I've been getting a lot of questions regarding when I will show this bar. Guys, in all honesty, it's probably going to be sometime mid-summer, mid to late summer, maybe fall, I don't know. Uh, but I do think I am going to get to show this. I am saving some footage of it actually running. So I, I am planning on, you know, having a, a video come out eventually where you get to see this bar. It's just going to be a while. Now we got our middle of the field done. We got to make four passes around it and then we'll be done. I called Dad and asked him what, we, what he thought about me doing a couple more fields tonight or doing one more field tonight. There's a 20 acre field. I might have enough fertilizer in the, in the tank to do it. He said he hasn't sprayed it yet, so I don't know if I've explained it before, but we want to try to not go back into a field after we strip tilt until we plant it. So therefore, we don't want to, you know, strip tilt, then spray it. So that he's still got to spray that field, and then it'll be ready to go. Let's go do that first thing in the morning. Should be in good shape for tomorrow. I just don't have a field to go to tonight. The implement I'm running will not cut through that, FYI. Snag that little guy. We're just going to leave him there. 9.07. I guess it's time to eat dinner. A really great dinner. Protein powder and yogurt. Last pass! Check a couple things here. Here in the Acu Terminal. This took us three hours to do 40 acres. That was with a 28 fill-up and a fuel fill-up. So each one of those knocked about 15, 10 to 15 minutes out. We used 37 gallons of fuel and we did 40.1 acres, or 41 acres basically. By the time we get there, it'll be 41. Hey guys, like I said, we're done with this field and when we get out, we're gonna close our ball valves on the tank um, so we don't drip any or leak any or anything like that. And we gotta put some stops up, we'll be ready to go. So not a bad first day. We ended up getting 65 acres done with, like I say, with the size of this bar, I'm not, um, not really expecting to be able to knock out two, 300 acres a day, unfortunately. And that coupled with the fact that we didn't get a, get to start until about, what time was it? Like, I think it was like three o'clock before we even got started. So hopefully tomorrow we can, uh, you know, make another den in it. Hopefully this field gets done first thing tomorrow. This is the one right beside the bins. Dad says he's gonna spray it as soon as he gets over here. PJ told me that dad was trying to squeeze 10 pounds of bleep into a five pound bucket and as it turns out he is correct we cannot even get the tractor in here well guys that's going to be it for this one I'm sorry if you guys are wanting to see the bar i really wish i could show you and i'm sorry if there's just a lot of commentary because i can't show you what's going on behind me I'm sorry but um yeah hopefully we'll be back here tomorrow doing the exact same thing thanks for watching and don't forget to like the video